Hey guys, welcome back. So, three weeks pass from update, I guess, for T5 in conjunction with the Part 38 bulbs. And uh, I've seen some improvements here and there, but I still have to remind you and myself that these T5 light bulbs are overdue. They need changing. Um, before I had the Itenic Blue Plus in the back and then Blue Plus and Purple Plus and I changed it to Aqua Blue Special and Blue Plus in the back and Blue Plus and Coral Plus in the front. And I've seen a little bit more fluffiness if you was to say. And I think I'm liking it actually. Um, this is my Zor Garden uh, with the clam. Um, these yellow polyps are, are actually becoming very invasive. <laughs> they, uh, they, they really attach to anything they can grab. Um, if you remember, I got these last October from uh, Tidal Gardens and it was a frag of maybe three heads, that was it. And believe me, all you need is just one, <laughs> at least for me. Um, they, they, they grow like weeds everywhere. I mean, I don't mind too much. Mm. Now, if you notice, right now, as you can see, the schooner blenny is actually going behind an actual uh, hermit crab shell and it's, uh, it's grown all over that shell. Um, this is my uh, Maxima clam. It's actually growing quite a bit since I got it back from uh, Reef of Palooza in New York. Um, I'm really happy with it. I was very nervous of actually getting a clam. Um, and so far, guys, I have to really, really pat myself, I guess, because I went thinking that I was just going to lose the money, and turned out that so far, so good. This is the Devil's Hand. Um, Miss Meldium, this, this is her favorite coral. I don't know why, because she thinks it's nice and fluffy. She likes all the soft corals, um, and I can see why. They all move. And that's a lot of the intent of why you would want softies or LPS. Um, but this guy looks cool, you know, extensions everywhere. Um, finally, I got a little piece growing out of nowhere of a GSP, so I guess that's a good sign in my system since I lost the entire um, GSP rock. Um, that's a rock flower anemone that I also got from Reef Palooza, New York. Um, it's growing quite a bit too. Loves to eat. Um, it's got a good appetite. I feed it mice and shrimp. Uh, this was the mystery coral, and I'm really convinced now that these are rainbow lobos, uh, lobophilia. Um, right now, there's five heads. Uh, if you remember back in the past, I got this from a friend that was losing his tank, and it was algae everywhere. And I said, "Okay, let me take it." And I didn't want to give up on it because it was my grandfather in the past and that was my hope. I didn't want to give up on this guy and so far, you know, it's going little by little but it's recovering quite well. Quite, quite well. Uh, this is the neon cabbage. It really doesn't grow much. Um, but it's grown maybe twice the size as how I got it. Um, either way, I don't want it to be good very big because I've seen other people especially from Reef Girl that she has had one massively big and I'm like whoa I don't want that that big anyways um, this is the, the teal candy cane or tropical um, it looks kind of funny to me I mean I don't know about you guys but look at it it looks like a blob I, I don't know <laughs> uh, it looks funny it definitely looks funny uh, the trachyphelia is big massive huge it loves to eat um, I don't know how, there's nothing negative I can say about this guy. It's just, it grows big. I mean, I remember when I got it and it was literally the size of, let's say, uh, maybe a half dollar. I mean, it was really, really tiny, really, really tiny. Uh, this is uh, the bird's nest that I got from Reef of Palooza, New York as well. And it's, uh, it's extending pretty well. Uh, got a lot of little sticks growing out <laughs> if you want to call it I keep forgetting what they are but it's grown and I'm very very happy with that since it's my favorite coral um, one of the little tips back there got caught with uh, the candy cane that I had next to it 
uh, when I got the piece and uh, it never seems to be growing back but it's doing all right um, the mint Provona uh, if you remember back in April uh, I almost lost it it really looked to deteriorated it looked dying 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 and it's 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 back to life pretty much it's really flourishing growing extended pretty well I mean, if you could look at it from the front of the tank and from the side of the tank you actually can see the 3d image of it it's pretty big uh, this is the green summer core and also I got this very very small from Tidal Gardens it was a very small piece and uh, it's encrusted to rock greatly um, I bumped it a couple of times a few branches just fell off uh, and is actually grown in other places in the tank as well so it's uh, spreading but not intentional it was by accident um, now with the T5 I'm starting to see not just white tips but little coloration as well so that's probably a good sign uh, this uh, green plating Monty uh, this guy is growing uh, insane insane like it's completely covered the plate that is underneath I mean this shadow effect is drastic in this camera you actually can see the, the, the bottom of it you know in person uh, what's covering what is actually covering um, but it's it's really really growing too big actually it is just curling up in a spiral form the red plenty Monty has not grown too much um, it actually looks like it's in a pause I do not know why um, it is growing obviously it's growing but it's it's not growing too much and maybe it's because of the light I mean it's low in my tank um, and now with a T5, it's uh, I'm starting to see little white, uh, light white edges in the back uh, as a growth. So I think that's a good thing. Uh, the pink summer coral, it was paused for a long time. Now it looks very fluffed, plumped up again. Um, that's a good thing, um, and I believe it's due to the T5 lighting. Um, the shattering as you can see in this camera guys it's drastic I do not know why it does that but if you look at this piece right here you do not see this drastic shadow in the bottom you, it, it actually does illuminate I don't know why it looks like this in camera but it is uh, the Kenya tree the Kenya tree as long as it's not splitting I am happy with it um, it's moving due to the mp10 it's at a uh, wave uh, wave um, wave mode or pulse mode per se short pulse mode so that's why it's moving that way and it seems to like it actually uh, since it's next to the, the power head uh, this is where the GSP used to be you can see some of it but it just it doesn't no heads pops no 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 polyps no nothing it just it's just a purple par uh, carpet instead I have all these polyps next to it so mm, it's alright at least it's not a dead rock um, the button corals um, or button polyps per se they keep growing again uh, there was to a point where they're actually diminishing and I was a little concerned about it because these guys have always been great um, I have fragged them at least like 10 or 15 times and sold them on uh, Facebook and, and stuff so this is the side of the, of the cube and uh, it looks pretty cool like I said the shadowing on this camera is dramatic guys please don't think that it's not providing enough light this this whole cube is lit everywhere I do not know why it looks like this in this camera um, maybe the ISO is too uh, too low the ISO uh, maybe I have to uh, tweak that but I always have lighting issues with this camera this is the yellow scroll coral Everybody keeps asking me why is it look. Sorry about that. Um, why does it look green? Well, when the lights are off, it's completely yellow. It's the light that uh, fluoresces uh, its color to green. I do not know why, but it's yellow. It's completely yellow. If I take my flashlight from my camera, it's yellow. It's not green. Now this is the war that I have guys, um, all of my Euphelias have literally attacked each other. Um, the hammerhead as you can see in the very bottom has got a dead head, 
uh, the torch killed it. I got it too close. Well, actually, all four of them were a little too close to each other. Uh, you can see the middle one, that's a frog spawn, to the right, it lost the head as well. The torch killed it. Um, and to the bottom left is uh, an octo spawn, a peach octo spawn that I got from Carlos and Rob New York. And the hammerhead um, uh, pretty much attacked that one. And the torch is fine, that one is just the king. Um, but that's my issue, my issue with my affiliates. These guy, this guy right here, the war, uh, reverse war call, I believe it is. I'm not sure if it's reverse or just the war call. This guy right here is growing big, 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 big. I had just a little sliver of it when I got it, and it is encrusting pretty nice. It's taking over the rock pretty nice. Now my problem here is, as you can see, it's getting too close to my red plenty Monty. Uh, what am I gonna do and what am I gonna do I do not want to take the red plenty Monty out of there because I like the way it looks even though it's growth is its growth is slow but it's an issue that war coral will kill it and I don't know the pink uh, pulsing uh, Xenia as you can see right here now the fish are all trying to uh, host it for some reason and the king of the crops uh, the yellow tang puts everybody else in check. Um, if you saw my video of how to teach, uh, or yeah, how to teach a clown to host a coral, um, my tomato clown started doing that with the Zania. Now, who my Clarky is doing it, and my tomato has moved to the trachephilia. <laughs> it really is. Um, as you can see, there you go. And she does nothing but protect and hover and snug and love the trachephilia. The Clarky controls the pink zinnia. Um, I don't know, like I said, I don't, I, <laughs> none of my fish ever hosted a coral and now they all want to host everything. Um, I don't know. I wish I never, never would have done it to be honest. <laughs> um, but you know, this is my overall look. This is everything how it's uh, how it's actually turning out within the three weeks of using the T5 in conjunction with the PAR 38 bulbs. To be honest, I am not disappointed, but I do have to change out the PAR 38 bulbs. So so far so good. These lightings are doing good. So when I buy the new sets, I'm gonna probably stick with Blue Plus and Coral Plus, uh, and just leave it at that. Um, all four lights of T5, they turn on at the same time. Uh, and then a few hours later is the part 38s. And then three hours later the part 38s turn off. And then the remaining times the T5. So it's not doing too bad. I'm very happy. Now this is my DIY gourmet feeding thawing frozen fruit gadget. Now I saw this just scrolling around the internet. And I'm like, wow, what? $28 for that? <laughs> I'm like, Get out of here, I can make my own. And I coming across, coming across, thinking, thinking, what can I do? So, this is what I came across with. And as you can see, very simple, very easy, the things I had lying around the house, blah, 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 blah. You can make that stuff out of nothing. Maybe, maybe, a, me maybe a medicine bottle or something and just make a few holes. Uh, on the lid or whatever. You can use anything to actually use this. Now, I cut just a little bit of hole in the bottom and to be honest, it's big enough. You may think it's not, but it is. It's big enough because once the mice's shrimp thaws out, I actually throw in the whole cube. I don't thaw it out outside um, and then put the mice's shrimp inside. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't, but that's the whole point of this thawing thing, right? So anyways, and as you can see, I also made this, and it helps because I have these uh, these veggie rounds, and the yellow tang seems to love it, but they sink. Now, what my problem upon it is that since it sinks, my Clarky steals it and sinks it to the very back of the cube, and then I'm never seen it, and I don't know what happens to it. Rather, just stays there, it just decomposes back there. I don't not, I don't know. So 
I made this thing and uh, all I do is put a veggie round in it and attach it to the side of the cube next to uh, the thawing gadget and it works it very works they all just seem to attack it once they smell it once it starts getting soft because it doesn't stick to the glass um, so that's what I made I made this for and it, it seems to work it seems to work it, it holds it pretty good very decent and I know that it's getting consumed because I see them I see them go after it um, sometimes a little piece there and here just starts floating around the tank but I've noticed that you know some of the corals are eating it too as it floats around the, the, the cube so that's not bad um, I have no negative effect with it no not too much uh, detritus floating around or on the rock or anything like that and um, this is pretty much my substitute, I guess, if you want to call it that way, for the nori. Um, because for some reason, do not ask me why, but my yellow tank does not like the nori. I've tried about three different brands and does not like it. And this is the only thing that I come across that the yellow tank loves this thing. Like once it knows it's there, it goes, it goes to town with it. It it, it just keeps going and going and going until it pretty much dissolves the whole thing and that's pretty good pretty much gets consumed and it's out of my you know it's out of my mind that where is it going does it decompose and is it going to create nit uh, nitrate or you know it's going to get my phosphate out of whack all that stuff but it seems to work guys so mm, you could try it if you want it seems to work for me I would recommend it or try to do something if you don't have any uh, you know something uh, to attach it to uh, that's my thing so as you can see here this is uh, how I attach it to my cube it's in the corner and from the mp10 it makes waves and it thaws out the cube for the the mice shrimp and literally thaws out and it comes down through that little hole and I actually have uh, a new, a new, uh, new fish, and that is the six line wrasse. And I was wondering how is he gonna get in it? But he is so thin, so fast, so sharp that he goes actually almost inside of this gadget and pulls a thought out mice strip and jets out quickly before they even notice it happened. Like I didn't even. <laughs> it actually shocked me how he actually ended up doing it, but. As you can see, it thaws out, and um, they all eat fine. They all feed. It's it's great. I actually love it, and I don't have that much negative effect in terms of uh, contaminating my system with uh, not throwing it out outside, exterior to the tank, and then putting it all inside the tank. As it does thaw out, they fall in one or two or three mice and shrimp at a time they're consuming it they're waiting for it so mice and shrimp everywhere that might get trapped in rock or places where I can't find it and then that becomes an issue because it rots there and it decomposes there so I think this is perfect this is a actually nice really sweet idea because they know it's gonna fall and they're just all waiting for it as you can see all of them all of my fish including even the hawkfish he's waiting he ain't stupid and as soon as they come down boom they, they grab it so if you want to check out the rest see it